Okay guys, remember this is a 12 pound truck. I wanna see how the paddle tires do with the added drag of the outboard motor. Uh, and uh, then we'll add the power of the outboard to see how it does overall. So viewer requested, I actually was asked if paddle tires would actually do this truck justice. This is the Toy Boda. I did cross the uh, scale channel all the way across the pond with the outboard motor. But in the very first episode, the maiden voyage, we saw the truck power itself back with just these stock tires. Now these are 1.9 sized with aluminum bead locks. You guys can see here that I ordered 1.9 size sand tires going to mount them up on aluminum beadlocks as well I want to see if these paddle tires actually make it across I'm going to take the outboard motor off on the back to reduce the weight and I want to see how well this actually works always want to make sure that the tires direction is always proper to when you're putting the actual wheel on the inside remember with paddle tires you know one uh, side does not fit all you want to make sure that the direction is the right way beadlocks go on the inside starts with a ring this is the inner ring that will actually hold the bead of the tire just want to make sure that the bead lip is on proper flip it over making sure the bead is lined up well, plus the foams are also uh, seated. Gonna put that beadlock ring just on the inside as well. You can see it just seating perfectly. You never need to cinch down the first two all the way. You just kind of want to get them started so you can start the other screws as well. You'll notice that I started on one side and I've kind of done a star pattern. So opposite sides, I started here immediately to the other side then a quarter way immediately to the other side and then I'll be going up here. The reason I'm doing the star pattern like that is so I can get equal torque on all of the screws and I have an equal cinch all the way around that bead rim. Just going around the outside because you'll see the actual first screw I have here, even though I'm doing the second tire here, kind of magic of TV, you'll see it's actually loose. And the reason why is because each one of these screws that goes down after the first one kind of cinches that lip down just that much more. So you want to go in once every few runs, make sure that your um, bead locks are done up properly. I want to make sure this is nice and tight for the water crossing. I'm going to be running on 3S LiPo, which is 11.1 .1 volts. Uh, removing that back outboard motor will remove quite a bit of weight. So I'm actually wondering uh, how this is actually going to float in the water. I imagine fairly flat and I wonder what kind of speed we're going to get out of it. Oh, all right, Mini-Me, you're all strapped in. Good luck, buddy. Uh, your steering wheel is still going to work, which will control the front tires all on their own. Your outboard motor is now gone. Make sure to have your head up pointed straight forward. The water cannon, which is expelling water from the back here, is on demand. It goes through a pump, slurps all the water from the back tray into this pump right here and shoots it out of the water cannon. 14 feet. Now in one tenth scale, if I was to multiply that, that would be 140 scale feet. So <laughs> plenty of power to get the water out of here. My friends, we've taken off all the weight. Right now she must weigh about, I'm gonna have to say about seven and a half pounds. Everything's charged up. Let's go to the pond. I have no idea if this is gonna be even worth it, but if I don't try, I won't know. <laughs> All right, 3S LiPo, let's go. It's in low gear right now. With a 40 turn motor, it will be a very slow crossing, but I think we should try and test it out in the canal, which is actually a moving uh, body of water. Everything should be good to go, and it should be able to drive right into the water. Let's see how this goes. There we are, floating. Whoa, a little bit of a slip. Let's see here, I'm gonna have to have some real traction if you can say that in the water. Look at this, the paddle tires are working, but I definitely have a little bit of a problem. 
the problem being is that I'm also again starting to plow into the water. Very interesting when I don't have the outboard motor on the back to help it uh, stay stable that it plows like that. <laughs> you can see with the weight of the outboard motor though, it may actually help with these paddle tires because it does have the flotation. It does have the speed. Check it out, look at this. But it's plowing more than anything. See that hood trying to go under the water? Not too bad. This is basically maximum speed. There's crawler speed and then high speed, if you will. So paddle tires may help in the overall um, uh, propulsion of this truck, but I wonder if the weight of the outboard motor on the back is really something that we do need. So let's go back and actually put the outboard motor back on there and see if we can get a different test result with that extra weight. Under there, over on top. Slide it into place, one screw through. Now I gotta remember in the last uh, video I did where I crossed the channel uh, or the water pond, really is what it is, uh, or a scale one tenth size channel, I actually had to have the uh, motor a little bit lower so I could plane a little better, but not too low because then I have that same plowing issue we just saw. So I wanna have it angled up just a little bit. Not a lot of wind today, so we should be able to maneuver the waves pretty well. For those that are just joining us, this is the Toy Boda. So I got a good charge on that battery. Now the paddle tires should give me the power plus the additional weight of the motor on the back and the propulsion. It might even this out pretty nicely. We'll see how we do. Beautiful calm day to get out, float around a little bit. Okay, let's head her into the water. Beautiful, instantly floating. Okay, so one of the things I notice about, about the paddle tires themselves is if you go too fast, again, it starts spitting water into the back box. Check it out. And that's okay, I've got the pump back there, I'm not too worried about it. But again, is it worth it for the amount of uh, work my batteries would have to do to have the paddle tires. Though it is moving faster than it did before with just the scale tires, would we all agree on that? We saw that in the first maiden attempt uh, in the first voyage. So I'm gonna bring it back, let's have a look and see how much water is in the back tray just from that small journey. There is a bit back there, let's see if the pump will actually filter it out for us. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this is how I purge the back bed of any water. So there is a problem of paddle tires. You can only go so fast at the moment until I build some rear fender flares uh, and then I'll be able to use those paddle tires at full bore. Until then, I may actually have a sinking problem, but I don't care. I think we should try and do a channel crossing anyway or a pond crossing. That outboard motor is so cool. So constant velocity again, guys. Let's get her going. Not too bad. I definitely could use a front bow design. I know everyone suggested that already, so thank you for your input. I agree. But in true Top Gear form, guys, this is just too cool. Around the reeds. Now I guess the true test that I came out here for, even though I got excited and forgot, was what if I add paddle power now? There it is. It's definitely going faster, guys. Whoa, look at that. Oh yeah, right out onto the beach. And then I can back out again. Let's get her in position so it's floating well and then I can get going.
Bum, 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 bum. It's got a long ways to go because it's going to start right there. So I'm going to put us up on a tripod. Well, I guess I can do it one-handed. Let's see here. Constant velocity. So it's going too fast, okay. I wonder if we're ever going to see this machine again. Let's start the pump. Yeah, definitely pumping water out. Not too much though. Okay, let's get in on there again. Again, captaining in with one hand, filming with the other. It is far over there. Can I even see it in the camera? There it is. I'm gonna have to turn it around and start bringing it here because the zoom doesn't work that far. Totally awesome. Oh, I think I'm plowing a little bit too much. Let's turn on that pump. Whoa, out of control. That's okay, taking it nice and slow. This is crazy for you guys. I can't believe you guys are out here doing this with me. I gotta zoom back on the camera a little bit so you can see exactly how far away this is. I'm trying to pilot the boat. Whoa, kind of wants to capsize a little bit there, I noticed. I wonder if I've taken on quite a bit of water. Turning on the pump. Yeah, I can see we're spritzing out some water for sure. Oh, I see one of the pontoons might be completely underwater. I don't want to get any water into that outboard engine, just like any usual outboard engine. You don't want to get water into it. Just kind of puttering along here. Looks like we were able to eject some water and we're getting there's some more water right there. <laughs> well, you look at all the water we had actually taken on. It's still purging water. That's quite a bit. So while it was far away, I should have, I guess I had too much throttle power going and I took on a ton of water. That's okay. It makes for good onboard footage. I'll turn the pump off. Looks like there is no more water to be pumped out. Still under constant velocity. I'm going to zoom the camera back so you can see where we're at. That's a Toyota Land Cruiser 110 scale, my friends. 12 pounds of radio control amphibious vehicle. Come on, that's got to earn me a like, click, and a share. Hey, what do you think? outboard power i do have about 13 videos thus far about building this truck and the different missions we've had with it so far uh, i know any builder roboticist or heck just anybody who's interested in this kind of tech there you go a floating truck with an outboard motor amazing a little jittery a little bit far away too let's get you back down to the beach and we can drive this thing back in Again, the farthest point I could find. We're totally going to get to shore over here. Now, if I turn it off, outboard is off. Propulsion is all into paddle tires. Got to be careful here. I think we were all uh, surprised in the beginning when the stock tires had actually <laughs> Look at this! The, two, the, the paddle tires actually sunk me at the back. Got to be very careful here. That's a win. Okay. Pump's not working. Paddle tires and prop power wins. Check it out. So those paddle tires, though they are very effective, they do throw quite a bit of water up the side. So I'll have to make some sort of fender flares uh, to protect it. But there you go, my friends. 
the toy boda for the second time making a huge journey all the way across the pond for you guys hopefully you're entertained thank you so much for tuning in i hope we got a like click a comment down below what do you think of this harebrained project did you follow all along or is this your very first episode of the toy boda or rc adventures my friends we'll see you in the next episode get outside and have fun with the hobby of rc you know i do As a side note for all those wondering, even though this is kind of like an after show thought, everyone was wondering what would happen if it completely filled up. There it is, full in the back, motor basically underwater, everything waterproof and fine. The only thing that really happens when we have a full back tray is that it maneuvers so much better. <laughs> Turns on a dime and those uh, flotation pontoons, they're awesome. Come on back to shore, buddy. Look at this, plowing perfectly. Ah, power, there you go. Gotta do it the right way, of course. <laughs>